Hi, welcome to Philly Philly. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to be making sourdough bread. I have my wonderful niece, Erica, and she's been making sourdough bread for about six months. But I'm here to tell you that the bread, and I've told you this, this is no surprise, the bread she makes is amazing. Um, our whole family has eaten it and her family, and it's some of the best sourdough I've ever had. So I was really anxious to learn how, so she's agreed to come to my kitchen and teach me how. So the first thing you taught me to do was to get the starter ready. So down below, we at least might give um, some suggestions about how to go about finding a good starter recipe. So in the description below, you can find that information. But she already has a starter because she's been making it for six months. And that's really the starter you've been using, right? Based yeah, yeah. Yeah. I started it at the end of November in between jobs. And it took like a week and a half to be ready. And then when it was ready, I made my first loaf and just been continuing it from there. That's awesome. So it is good to know also that it takes about a week and a half when you initially decide, mm -hmm. I want to make sourdough yeah. bread. You, it's not going to be like tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to take some time. And really, the starter is all about how it develops its unique flavor, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's the leavening agent instead of yeast for gotcha. sourdough bread okay. and kind of what gives it such a unique and good flavor. An awesome flavor. Um, and because I didn't have any friends in the area that made sourdough, I made my own starter, but I would definitely recommend if you know someone that makes it, just have them give you some of their starter because there's always too much. And That's a great tip. It doesn't really make it better to make your own. Okay. Share it and then grow it yourself. But And I love that idea of sharing it too. Yeah. And so she's given me some, when I fed the starter last night, she's given me some extra starter so that I can kind of keep that alive and share and make some more subsequent loaves. So first let me show you what I did last night when I fed the starter. All right, it's time to feed my starter. As the Dunkin' Donuts man would say, it's time to make the donuts. However, for my purposes with the sourdough bread, it's time to feed the starter. So in front of me, I have all I need, flour, I have the start, the original starter from my niece. I have the jar that I'm going to be mixing it in and warm water. I'm going to be putting equal amounts of each of those into this jar. That's going to be 50 grams of the old starter, 50 grams of the flour, and 50 grams of warm or lukewarm water. So just to make sure that I'm all kosher with everything, I'm going to use my scale here to make sure all of the measurements are precise. So let's get going. We'll start with the original starter. So I have my scale on to grams. I'm going to put my little dish here. I'm going to press this to make it back at zero. And I'm going to take my starter and pour some out and get it to 50 grams, that's the intention. So you can see the foamy goodness there, all that flavor. So let me gently put it in and make it 50 grams. I'm a little worried how this is all gonna work. So let's see, we're at 20, 30, 40. Okay, let me slow up. We're at 48, 49, just a little smidge more, come on. And that should be 50. Next, I'm gonna measure the water, the warm water. So I'll put this on. This will make it go to zero. And I'm gonna pour it to get 50 grams of water. Oh, we're at 32. 41. 44. 48. Let's get there, let's get to 50. We're at 51. Okay, I'll pour just a smidge out. There we are, 50 grams of water. And now we're gonna measure the flour. So let's put our container, equal it out at zero, and let's add our flour. All right, just regular flour with this. 27, 42, 43, 43. Oh, I knew I was going to go over. Okay, let's get a spoon and get some of that out. Okay, 
There's 50, perfect. We're, we're good to go. Now we're gonna take our precise measurements and add them to our new container. And this will be the starter that we use for the bread. So first, we're going to pour the starter in. I wanna make sure I get all of it. I'll get every last bit because we certainly have measured it. I kind of feel like maybe I should have put this directly into the jar, but I was worried that I would overdo it. So I'm trying to make sure I get every, or at least almost every last bit out. Hopefully that will work. Then we are going to add the water next. Let's move that over so you can see it right there. We're going to add the water, the warm water, warm or lukewarm. And then we're going to add our flour. I'm trying to get that in. You know what? I'm going to put it in a napkin so it goes in more cleanly. If I put it in like this, it'll get in a little bit more cleanly. There we go. I think we got it all. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to take these, my niece recommended the chopsticks to just mix it all together. Doesn't have to be perfect. She said, you'll know. Yeah. Looks good. Put the lid on tight. Okay, so that's what happened last night. And you had recommend, just for timing's sake, that was like at 8 p.m. Yeah. last night. And now it is about a little after 9.30. So what was the timing of, I know part of it's ultimately when we bake off the loaf, but what loaf, but was there, um, you know, a certain idea in mind with, with timing when you do the starter, when your next steps are? Yeah, um, unfortunately it can range depending okay. on temperature. So the warmer it is, the less time you need after feeding okay. your starter. Okay. It could take as little as like four hours. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, in the winter, it took my starter quite a bit to rise and be ready for another feed or to use. But I always find that it's better to start baking with a starter that's a little past its peak than one that hasn't peaked yet. So even this one that I can um, show. And Amy fed last night. It is past its peak, but it'll work fine. Um, and you for can our see purposes. that it went up and then it has dropped. So that showed that it went up to its peak. Mm -hmm. I would have never known what that was until we chatted mm -hmm. about it. So, so that's good to know. And that's just the, where it's, we're going to get all of our flavor from, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, what should we do next? Okay. So, the first step is super simple. We're just mixing together all our ingredients and sourdough bread. At its simplest is just your sourdough starter, flour, bread flour, yeah. um, water, and salt. So excellent. excellent. And I, we should measure it, right? Like if, yeah, if, if possible. Ki kitchen scale is the easiest and the most effective way to measure your ingredients correctly because flour is tricky to measure by volume. So weight is definitely the best move there if you're able. And you can get a kitchen scale on like Amazon for 10 bucks. I was gonna so. say, I'll link the one that I have, I got from Amazon. Um, actually, my son Matt helped <laughs> me pick it. And I'll put a link below of what um, that scale is, just in case you need to get started. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I will say, if you do any baking, a scale is good for mm -hmm. that, especially breads, because that makes your measure measurements much more precise mm -hmm. and I think really aids in the final product. And less dishes. Oh, I didn't think about mm -hmm. that. You're right, mm -hmm. less dishes. Okay, so now for this, what? how do you approach it then yeah. with doing what we're gonna do? Yeah, so I usually start um, with the water okay. just because it's easiest for me to have the water on the bottom and then mix in the things from there. And does the water need to be any temperature? Yeah, um, I usually do warm water, not hot, but if it's warm, it helps the rising process. Okay. And especially in this in-between weather, I don't know what I'm expecting. I'm starting, because I started sourdough in the winter. I'm moving into warmer months right. now and trying to figure things out. I didn't so, think about that. It might be a little bit different from what you've been yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh, there was one day I did it when we had that little 80 degree span right. in April. In April. It was crazy. And it, it grew really fast, but <laughs> you know, it always works out even if it's a little overproofed. Yeah. So I think that's the, from talking with Erica about this whole process is that there is some flexibility within the 
what would you call it, like the guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that helps me because I think I would feel very intimidated feeling like, oh my gosh, it has <laughs> to be right then, right then. And probably really um, famous bakers might disagree, yeah. <laughs> but however, for the home cook, flexibility is mm -hmm. there, which I love. All right, yeah. so what, how should we do this? So start with our bowl on our scale and we're just gonna wanna tear it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on grams, so we're good. And I... And by the way, tearing it just means you want to make sure oh. that your scale says zero. Um, if you've already turned on your scale, you can put whatever you're measuring it in. You can press the on off again and it brings it back to zero. And most scales have a variety of different measurements. <laughs> It was on grams because I had it on grams when I did the um, feeding the starter because I mm -hmm. used it too. So I had already ran this to make sure it was warm, but it cooled off. That's so what we're happens, running it yeah. to make sure it's warm. So again. is it lukewarm or is it past lukewarm? I do a little point. past lukewarm. That's what I did last night for the starter. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm just gonna um, move your glass here. There. Mm, okay. That's good. <laughs> you mind if I touch? Let's yeah. see. And our hands are both clean. <laughs> okay, so that's that's um, that to me is a little still like mine was probably a little bit warmer than that. Yeah, you can use warmer, okay, and cool. it's different again every time I okay, do it. Cool, um, I love it. But so I've made a couple different sourdough recipes, and at this point, I don't necessarily follow a certain one, but I know my proportions pretty well. So for this basic sourdough recipe, we're going to do 375 grams of water. And this is the part I find a little intimidating because you're trying to get the exact measurement, but you can always remove some with a spoon or a little, a little bowl or something. And, yeah, and also, again, if you're like 10 grams over or under, I would even say it's probably fine. And we're under right now. Which is actually helpful because last night I was obsess obsessing for oh. one gram. I literally oh. was. Because <laughs> I'd never done it, so I wasn't sure how precise. So we're at... 375. Perfect. Okay. It's going to be a great works. day. And by the way, uh, in the link below, and I will um, specify this, is the first one you actually used. So mm -hmm. there was a certain recipe used first that you found yeah. online, and you said it was quite simple. So yeah. that is linked below for just getting started. Yeah, I looked up a beginner recipe. That one had good reviews, and it was a great starter loaf to work with. The dough had a lower water content, mm -hmm. which made it easier to work with and shape. So that was super helpful. But the one now has a higher, mm -hmm. um, and you call it hydration. Hydration, I don't know what any of it means, but that that's But what, there's that's more water, correct? Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if that's why you, the ones you do now are so moist. Could be. So, <laughs> all right, so we got the water. Um, and then what we're gonna do next is add the starter. I add anywhere between 50 to 100 grams for okay. this. Um, do you want a little spatula? Or should I use a little spatula or does it just pour? I pour it, but you can also use a spatula. So you said so 50 to 100. 100. Mm -hmm. So where would you go? Where would you shoot for? It depends on my mood and how much starter I have, honestly. Well, tell me like, what mood you're thinking. Um, Is it more flavor? Oh, okay. So we'll say like 75. Okay. But while we're doing this, you probably can't see from the camera, but the starter is floating. Okay. That's actually what people say to do the float test to see if your starter is active and whether Ooh. or not it should be used. So it is floating, so it is indeed active. Um, That's good to know. And like I said, F I don't know. 75, by the way, is what yeah. we're shooting for, okay. I don't always use an active starter because I just do it when I have time. And it still works, but this one is active, so That's if you're gonna be technically extra special. directions. I love it. So I'm gonna bring this over to show, that way, we can get a closer up. There we go. Beautiful. 74, is that good? All right, let me. 75. And, <laughs> 75, oh my gosh, it's a perfect sourdough day. So let me just bring this over. Does that mess up our scale or we have um, to go no, zero anyway? No, we're gonna tear it, yeah. So you can kind of see it is floating. So we are, we are in good hands. But I love what you said is that even when it's not floating, mm -hmm. you've used it and you've thought the results yeah. were yummy. And I think that's awesome. And actually, before we add the flour, yep. I usually do a little bit of mix to incorporate the starter into the water, okay. just so then when you're blending it with the flour. So that's a good tip. Nothing too crazy. There's still going to be some like parts floating around, um, especially when the starter is active, because it's a different texture than okay. once it's fallen. Um, but 
just it helps a little incorporate it so it does you can tell it got very cloudy that's fine. with just a few little pieces mm -hmm. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. This is like so cool. And I love how you're giving us some information kind of about like the float test and stuff. I, mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. All right. So um, now. Yeah. Flour is going to be our next step. Um, now, do you just start pouring? I usually, yeah, just pour straight from the bag. Okay. We're doing 500 grams of 500 red flour. Grams. Okay. This pouring is just and definitely think, a little out of my comfort zone. Yeah. This is going to use most of the bag based on what we weighed the bag. So you're at... 444. Okay. Yeah, we are going to have enough. We weren't sure, but um, and we're going 500, right? Yeah. Yeah, 491. 491. 496. Beautiful. Want to take some out? We don't have to, but if you want to. No, let's just, it's a 506. 506. But it really, at that point, isn't going to be a big deal, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Um, so then, different people do it differently. A lot of. We're done with this. Um, no, we're gonna use okay. it for the salt as well. Okay, um, lots of people, when they're adding their salt, they do it after the initial mix process, and okay. they mix the salt with hot water to kind of incorporate it easier. Um, Interesting. I actually haven't tried that yet, but it turns out perfectly fine when I add the salt at the beginning. So I just. So you add the a step, but I start to incorporate the flour a little bit. Okay. Leave it shaggy, and then I add the salt. So when it's shaggy, that's when you do the salt. Yeah. Okay. And I, I know what you meant by again, that. Again, it depends by my mood as well. <laughs> I'm not great at following directions, but. But I have to say, part of what, as someone who's never made a sourdough loaf, I'm heartened by is because of that and tasting what her loaves taste like. That actually, to me, makes it much less intimidating mm -hmm. that you can kind of bring your mood and personality to it. And again, we're not trying to do a baking competition, but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, this sourdough is amazing. It is so delicious. Okay, so this that is... looks shaggy. Yeah, this is shaggy. Okay. So we're going to add... Um, I usually leave, I guess we can leave the yeah, spoon in. you can leave the spoon if so you So that is it. what's wonderful. As long as you, what is it called, tear it mm -hmm. to zero, you can... That's so cool. Yeah. So I get one of those scales. <laughs> I usually add close to 12 grams. 12 grams, okay. Flavor. <laughs> we love salt. Well, salt is, yeah, it totally gives the flavor. And you are at 10. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is actually, I, I will have to tell you, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but uh, before this time together when I would use this to measure I would measure each individual thing separate and then add it uh, because it never <laughs> dawned on me well, to tear it to um, this and I feel actually a little bit silly but ooh, it is a definitely yeah. um, what's it, aggressive dough meaning it has it's amazing how that has sopped up mm. the I'm gonna get a little thing to put on the blow because yeah. it actually helps I believe it yeah, this helps just with creating just a cushion surface. Mm -hmm. You could just put a towel there. Yeah, much better. So, so I don't feel like I'm clanking. Yeah. We are just incorporating the ingredients right now until there's no dry flour. We're okay. not really trying to mix it too much. Okay. Because so the salt's fine even though yeah, like it's, with that. Okay. Because we of the next steps we're going to be doing, which is first an autolyse process, which allows the gluten to develop, okay. and then a series of stretches and folds, everything so will incorporate. So yeah. that's actually great, as long as there's no dry flour. And later on in the video, we will be showing um, what this looks like close up, mm -hmm. but just kind of okay. wanted to launch things. Um, and so I right. thought this would be an easy tool to scrape this off. This is a our... great tool. Did you get this on Amazon too? Do you remember? Um, I got it for Christmas one year. So okay. Probably. So ask your mom. <laughs> yeah, ask my mom. <laughs> no, I love it. She said this is probably something that could also be used for cleaning dishes, but it's great. I think that's, yeah, what I got it for. But I actually think it's great because it just, it mm -hmm. kind of, I like using things closer that don't have a handle. I think you have more control. Mm -hmm. um, so now that it's incorporated, we need to let it rest and complete the auto lease process. Okay. Um, and the auto lease again means? I I know it's supposed to help the gluten develop. Okay, it, but it gives, I do know that with a lot of times when you're making any kind of bread dough, even pizza dough, 
letting it rest really helps, like you said, the gluten develop mm -hmm. and give you whatever texture you want. So, yeah, I mean, when we, you'll kind of see the dough change as we work with it. Okay. But we're just going to cover it with a wet towel. Does and it have to it be sit. warm or cold or is it? Um, I usually do warm water because then it's not freezing. But so the it same, doesn't really. Or the same kind of water. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's pretty wet. So just a pretty yeah. wet towel. I'd rather it be too wet than too dry because yeah. we want to keep this dough hydrated. But yeah. So that's what the purpose of that is. And then should we, because um, as many people that have watched my videos know, a lot of times I'll let things proof in my microwave. Is it fine out here? Or um, is the microwave better just so that it won't have any drafts? Yeah, we're not proofing it yet really oh, okay. per se. So, it so really yeah, okay. it's fine. To and out. how long will it be in this process? Um, 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. And then, so we'll check back and, and we'll let you know what you think when we check it and mm -hmm. why we know if it's time to proceed to the next step, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so we're back. It's been 30 minutes and what are our next steps? So we're gonna start to stretch and fold the dough. Um, there's a series of stretch and folds that you can do. It's not necessary, but it does help to develop gluten, okay. um, make the dough hold its shape, helps it impacts the crumb Wonderful. when you're making it. So lots of people recommend doing four if you can with 30 to hour, 30 minute to hour intervals in gotcha. between. I usually do four if I can and I just do 30 minutes in between because it's All easiest. Right. Um, and you can kind of tell as you're doing the stretch and fold progress process, you can see the dough change, you can feel it change, the texture changes. Um, so that's cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring the camera closer so you can see what we're actually doing with each of the stretch and folds. So you'll see um, the video change, but uh, I definitely would love to do the four because I want to make sure and give this loaf as good a chance um, <laughs> as possible. So. Okay. So we're going to uncover our dough here. Uh, we can just move this to the side because we're yep. going to continue to use it as Perfect. we're having the dough rest. I just have a little bowl of water here to wet our hands um, so it doesn't stick. Perfect. So this is our dough now. You can see it's still a little shaggy. It looks a little different from where we left off, but it's not smooth at all. So as we go through the stretches and folds, it's gonna become nice and smooth, nice and stretchy. So that's amazing. I'm just gonna dive in and get her started because the first one is always the messiest because the dough hasn't really been like mixed together yet. I'm kind of glad you're doing this first time. <laughs> So just get it started, grab a piece at the end, and you yeah. pull it up and down. That's it? Mm-hmm. And then, and then I usually go just opposite, opposite Okay. Now, and I do already have dough on my hands, but it happens. And you just dip it again each yeah, time. Yeah, I kind of use my hands, my clean hands, to squeegee the sides yeah. okay. to pull it down. Again, stretch. Oh, my goodness. And pull. now am I supposed to try this, this next one? Go for it, Oh, yeah. goodness. All right. Okay. A little nervous. All right, so I'm dipping my hands. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to grab this dough, right? Yeah. And then just bring it up like yeah. that. Now, it doesn't look as stretchy as yours did. Is this no, okay? No, that's good. Um, and it's, again, as we move forward and do more series, okay. it'll be easier to stretch, but you can do the other side now. So yeah. just go like that. So it looked like mine was so much more narrow. Is that because you've already stretched the first two sides? Is that normal how that's going to look? Do you know what I mean? Um, like when I pulled it, it just seemed... Oh, yeah. because. It was already in the center. Now um, it's not really sticking, so is that okay? You're, yeah, you're fine. It's it's a very flexible dough. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna work with whatever we do to it. Um, and like I said, the first one is always the most chaotic. Okay. It'll look a little nicer as we continue. Mine never looks as good as the videos I see. Everyone's is like falling into perfect place. Wow, of but course. It, but it tastes fine. So. But I love see. But see, this is what I feel like we all need to hear mm -hmm. because you need to know that when you're doing this. Yeah. Because so, this seems very foreign. So four is fine. I'm kind of just like, after the first dough, I kind of check the texture of it to see if I feel like salt clumps okay. or something. It's not really part of it, but just to make sure everything's mixed in. And then I'll just finish it off with a few folds here. Okay. Um, four or? Um, yeah. I Again, I don't usually count. <laughs> okay. But um, I'll and do. And so you're just going around then? Yeah, just okay. to kind of make it even um you want me to try one yeah go for okay. it that one there and then but and i'm i see that you're kind of feeling it too as you're pulling it so mm -hmm. that's something i would so I, i'm kind of feeling that like that mm -hmm. and then just pulling it like that mm -hmm. and should i do one more 
Um, you tell me. It You're... looks pretty round right now. Okay. Um, do you tuck it all or you just enough? like leave it? I just leave it. Okay. Honestly, at this I love stage. that. I yeah. think that's great. The simpler, the better. So we did in this one, we did about seven. That was like mm -hmm. the seventh. So that's all good. Um, and now we cover it, correct? Yeah, we're going to recover it, give it another half an hour to rest, half an hour to an hour. We're going to probably okay. do a half an hour. Okay. Um, and then we'll keep the stretching and folding. We'll keep the stretching folding. Wonderful. Okay, so this is the second one. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uncover, take a peek at our dough. Um, right. You see a little more elastic than the last time we peeked at it. Yep. Um, so I don't always do this, but I'm just going to scrape down the sides a little bit with this wet thing just because we have some residue dough. Just make sure it's all in there. Gotcha. And one of the things you and I were talking about while we were waiting for this last one was we were looking at a video that we'll include below that shows what the stretching process looks mm -hmm. like, um, but she didn't moisten her hands, and you were talking about the hydration factor of, mm -hmm. of that. So the, the water isn't bad. No, we just um, we like to keep the dough moist, so yes. that's part of the reason. Would you yeah. like to start? Um, sure. If you want me to, and you yeah. can, but please tell me if there's anything that I could do better. <laughs> It really is so flexible. It'll the dough will work with you. So like that. Mhm. Mm that yeah, good. That's great. Okay. Um, and you suggest going across. Yeah, right? I usually do across. Yep. I don't know that it really no? matters, but that is what I do. Okay. Can you feel oh, a difference texturally? Yes, I can tell. It's it's um, and I didn't wet my hands, so I'll do that it's, next time. It's all good. So like that. Yeah. So just kind of, if it comes mm -hmm. off the bowl, just do a little stretch. Yeah. Now we were talking also about not wanting it to rip because I saw there's a little part there. Can you talk about the, the yeah. ripping thing? Um, I mean, I don't fully know the science or any of this because I am really just here for the fun. Of course, <laughs> but, which is what um, I love about it, honestly. Keeping the dough together is just ideal because you know if you're breaking that structure and then trying to piece it back together that's true that makes sense and i'm just feeling so if i see a bubble do i pop it see there's a little um, bubble there i don't all I right don't, i don't know that it matters but I, would, I i just I wasn't love, sure i love a crummy sourdough so i always assume that the bubbles help the crumbs sure i love that but so then that's four right yeah do so any we more could, we could pause there um I kind of want to feel the dough. Please so feel it. Yeah, so my, let me know what you're feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it could just be four, but in the effort of trying yeah. to, oh, I don't want to use that one. Yeah, this feels great. This feels as it would normally feel for me. So I'm not stretching it too much because you already did some good yeah. stretches. I just wanted to get my hands on it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And to see, so I did notice the texture change for sure. It's definitely tighter, but also like smooth, you know? It is. It's actually really nice texture. Yeah. Okay, um, and that's sufficient. I didn't really stretch it much, but just to feel it and kind of put it back yep. into shape. And then, perfect. again, this is what it looks like now. We'll we're just going to cover. It and gun it in another half an hour. Wonderful. And so this time I'll be by myself, so I might sound nervous, friends. <laughs> but um, so thank you. And then the next time I see you will be when we do the shaping. Shaping, yeah. Wonderful. Great. Okay. 30 minutes are up and I'm on my own, so a little bit intimidated by it. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to continue this process of stretching and folding. I guess stretching and pulling and folding. And so it just feels so smooth. It really has a lovely feel to it. This is my third stretch and fold. And I'm feeling that dough and it's, it's, it's just really nice. And we're just wetting in because this is the hydration that she talks about that really makes, I think, her loaves extra special. I'm gonna leave those bubbles in like she talked about. I'm seeing some little bubbles going, which will make some nice little air pockets, I guess, eventually. Okay, and there we go. And that's all she wrote. So I'm going to rinse my, actually I don't have to rinse my hands. I'm just gonna put this over and set it for 
30 minutes and for our last stretch and fold. See you then. Okay, it's been 30 minutes and this will be our last stretch and pull or stretch and fold. Unravel and see, you can see it looks super smooth again. And I'm just gonna continue the process that we've been doing. I'm gonna go down deep, bring it up, kind of feel it, stretch it, pull it over. I'm actually going to try doing it just around the bowl this time for this time. Like I know is another technique. Up. This will be our final one. And then I'll be putting it in the microwave, which is a good spot in our place. Um, that creates a constant temperature. It's kind of insulated from, you know, uh, Temperature changes, keeps everything constant. So it's a good thing to keep in mind whether you want to keep things warm or whether you want to keep things a regular temperature. So this is the last one. Just gonna kind of feel this out, pull it over. And there we go. And so this will hang out for probably around um, six hours. I will check it after six hours to see if um, it looks like it's doubled in size. That's what we're looking for. So I will check back in six hours, take a peek. And when it has doubled, we will get together. Erica will be back over and we will continue on with our next steps. So see you then. So the bulk rise is done. It has doubled and looks beautiful. And so basically we were looking for when it had doubled and it, for, it took a little bit longer than six hours, but it really depends on temperature, humidity, like yeah, all of those things. Yeah, temperature is definitely the biggest contributor okay. there. That um, looks good now. Yeah, for the winter it took as long as probably like 12 hours for some reason. Really? Like, okay. That was also because sometimes I would just do it at night and yeah, like in the morning, I'm sure it's done. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, this is great. This is great. Okay. So what are our next steps? Our next step is to pour out the dough from the bowl and we are going to shape it and put it in this banneton to kind of hold its shape um, before we do a cold proof of the fridge. Perfect. Okay. I might set it over here just so we can make sure mm -hmm. it gets a good view. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. Um, do you want a little sifter to help? Because sometimes I use this little sifter that helps when I'm spreading. Yeah, flour. sifter. You, I've never been good with the whole like the people that go chick, chick, chick. And I don't do that, but I also don't use a sifter when I do it at home. So, so you should, if you have a trick that works, not a trick per se. I just, you just do what you do. Well, show me. Cause I, I err <laughs> on the side of ease and I yeah. use a little mini sifter. Yeah, to do I it. use a spoon usually and I just okay. shake. So and you it, do that very nicely. <laughs> and it's close enough. Yeah, that kind works. Of is it's what lightly I like floury. Cause I don't, you don't want to add too much flour. Right because we like a hydrated dough. However, you don't want it sticking to the counter. Okay. Either. Um, do you flour your hands or do we not? I do not, Okay. Um, typically. So um, I'm gonna use this squeegee to get it out of the bowl here. Um, just kind of going around the sides, getting it all off on there. You do that well, very well. <laughs> Practice. Yes. And just pour it all out here. Usually I do plastic bowls, so this last one's a little heavier in my hand. But yeah, I'm not no, that should be the trick, right? <laughs> it looks gorgeous. Right. It's beautiful dough. Um, and our hands are both clean. Yes. So then before I shape it, I just like to stretch it out a little, not too thin, but kind of just into a nice rectangle. Okay. It's nice and light and fluffy. Wow. Is it good? <laughs> Is it how you, are you happy with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It, again, my dough is different every time I make it, and it always turns out fine. Good. So, again, that flexibility, which I think is so nice with people that are trying to bake mm -hmm. sourdough. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned we're going to fold it like an envelope. Yeah. Um, so we're going to kind of take the ends in this way and the ends in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll start just by grabbing up from the corner here. Mm -hmm. It's a little sticky still because I didn't put a ton of flour. Yeah. 
but I'd rather have it too sticky than not sticking up. And we're just gonna fold this in from the side. You want me to bring this one in? Yep. Okay, let's do it. Perfect. Oh, okay. Ooh, it's so squishy. I like know. it's very buoyant. If that yeah. does that make sense? Like yeah. the terminology. Um, kind of over here. It has some air in there. Yeah. We just want to let that happen, like mm -hmm. let that be the air. Yeah, right? I'm not I'm not one for squishing air bubbles. And then like that? Yeah. Is that far enough? Mm-hmm. And then I just kinda like to try to pinch a little together, not too aggressively, okay. but just because you don't want like open things because that the air is going to expand there and then it's of not going to seal. Does so, that look okay for on that side? Yeah, it's kind of an awkward shape now. It's square okay. and like this, but what we're going to do is I'm going to take my bench scraper here, go under it, um, make sure I have some nice power, and give it a flip. Um, and this is when we're really going to start to shape it. So what I do is I go around with my bench scraper and my hand and I just go under and I tuck and I go under and I tuck until we get this nice kind of round bowl. That's interesting, so okay. That's a few, if you wanna take over, kind of keep just right. trying to so round it. So you want either side, so you want that way and you yeah, want the other side. Yeah, I just kind of keep turning it in a circle. Okay. And use my hand to guide as well. And this bench scraper is absolutely what's gonna help with that. Yeah. All right. So go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go on this side. Whoops, I don't know if I... You're good. <laughs> Um, if you want to like use one of your hands to like help like kind of this? press off the like side, yeah. That. Okay. I feel like I ruined your shape. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this that's my sneaker. So just for because I knew this would be a question if I was by myself, there is a buoyancy to it and these bubbles, so that is a good thing. Yes. I think so. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually, I do, your bread's phenomenal, so I care what you think. Um, it depends on the proof. Um, this dough is a little further proofed, so it's more similar to those doughs that I have um, that have maybe overproofed a little bit, yeah. but again, they all turn out well. So um, basically what had happened was when we were proofing it, it was going kind of slow, and so then I, to speed it up a little bit, we put it in, I have an oven function that's just proof for about a half hour and it sped it up mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah. So then would you do more, would you? Um, show me how you would do it for the final. So for the final one, before I do the final mm -hmm. shaping here, I just wanna prepare the Vanaton. So this one's been used a few times. What I normally do in between is I brush it off and I shake off the excess flour. Is that um, regular flour or rice flour? Um, so I've used both in here, but this is more so rice flour because it doesn't burn the way regular flour does. Okay. Um, granted, for mine, I'm not usually cooking them long enough or at high enough heats to burn the flour, but it also does give us a nice white surface to work with when nice. we're doing scoring and especially if we're scoring designs on the top or a little. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just shaking some rice flour. Okay, in, in a sifter, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The sifty jar and so now that's all prepared because this part can get a little delicate <laughs> so i i might do that if you're okay with that oh, i would love to i'd love um, to see it so i'm gonna do i um, mean I'd, lo I'd love to see it excuse, excuse me i'm getting a little sticky here because i left it hold on we're gonna do a little final shape here mm -hmm. with our dough um sorry this is in my way yeah i can look for you too if you want me to Get it just nice and round. And Looks some good. of it's gonna fall apart as I'm scooping it anyway, so just as close as we can. But that's okay. pretty that's pretty round there. Yeah, that's nice. With a few air bubbles on the side. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's a big bubble there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so got our bandits on here. And I'm just going to get my bench scraper under and face it. Oh no. Scoop. So you flipped it so the top now is the bottom, mm -hmm. correct? Okay, so that's the main thing to remember is this top part becomes the bottom in the banneton. Okay. Yes. And if you don't have a banneton, just um, what would you do? I use a bowl that's of similar size, so it's about like nine inches mm -hmm. in diameter and a clean cloth and then you flour the cloth. So a clean cloth would be inside mm -hmm. and you flour the cloth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I just do a little bit of rice flour on top because we put this towel over top and, and we don't stick. want it to stick yes. to that either. So this is the official, as you said, banneton that you could purchase 
Um, do you do, um, I'm trying to know you guys a gift from my son. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I can check where he got it so that that I believe way. I he got it from Ikea. Okay, so I can um, but, include that link below too. Mm -hmm. But a bowl with a cloth, mm -hmm. a clean cloth that's, that's flowered would yeah, be fun. That's what right. I used at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, before. I, I remember great. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so what are we going to do now that it's already in the banditon? So we are going to put it in the fridge for a cold proof overnight. We're baking it off tomorrow. So it's going to be about 16 hours, I think. What time is it? Around 16 hours. Okay. Yeah, it's um, um, quarter till nine. Yeah, I'm not doing that math okay. right now, but 16, sure. Sounds good. Um, Sounds perfect. So I have left dough in the fridge for as long as nearly 72 hours. Wouldn't recommend that long. I'd say like 48 is probably tops. It just makes, when I've left it in the fridge yes. longer, I just notice like a more crispy bottom part. Gotcha. Not in the best way, but it's it's still great. It still works. So um, don't discard it. Just, yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's all that work, right? Yeah. Um, but I feel like 24, 36 hours is a sweet spot, but okay. it just helps flavors develop. Um, one of the helpful things about the cold proof is it like makes it more solid because so, as we were working it yeah. at the end it was getting sticky again this helps it just like make it really easy to work with and score before we bake it in gotcha. the oven. so perfect yeah we're gonna so it's going to go in the fridge it's going to go to bed and we're going to go to bed too and we yeah. will see you um tomorrow and for those that want to see the part two uh, just check out the part two video the link will be below and you'll see how we uh, scored it and baked it off and what the final product yeah. turned out into. And so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, quick little clean yes, up please. with the flour on the counter oh, yes. and our bench scraper. She has the sink here, which is really lovely. It's but perfect. even if you're just going into your hand, just use your bench scraper. Because mm. flour, it's a mess. It took flour me way too long to <laughs> learn this and I was going through lots of paper towels. So. The bench scraper. I'm sure a lot tool. of you. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but it's always good to have good tips, though. <laughs> Never bad thing. So thank you so much, and I'm so glad you helped with this part, and I look forward to part two.